What's up, Tim Sykes here. Very excited to introduce you to a trader who has really uh, hit his stride in just the past few years. And we're doing this free presentation to really go over what has changed in his trading. So if you click the link below, you can tune in. This is a 100% free presentation. Just do me a favor, take notes, and start to be a little more open-minded with your trading. Um, I think that you'll be surprised, like once you start to tweak your strategies, even a little bit, you can do a lot better. It's not like a perfect science for anybody, but you start to learn uh, what successful traders do in different markets and how they adapt uh, to become profitable. I know 2022 was a very tough year for investors and traders, one of the worst years, but both this trader and myself were green on the year, not by you know any huge amount, but we were still green because we tweaked our strategy. So check out this link below, click it, uh, tune into this free presentation and learn to tweak your own strategy. See you soon. I finished a, a degree in accounting and uh, was at University of Texas at Austin. And, um, you know, I, I decided to, to go into that field and, and worked as an accountant for a few years and never really enjoyed it. But uh, I knew there was something better out there for me. And, um, you know, I wasn't really sure what, but uh, I did come across uh, Tim Sykes. YouTube videos back in 2008, 2000, early 2009, and um, started to really take interest into trading penny stocks, and um, you know, learning some some really interesting strategies that that Tim had used to turn his twelve thousand dollars of bar mitzvah money into a couple of million dollars. So, uh, so I figured, why not give it a shot, and and um, and that's what I did. So I, I quit my accounting. Uh, job and transitioned into uh, day trading and the first you know the first year was tough it was definitely a learning process but um, but like anything you know you put hard work and you prepare uh, day in day out and and that's um, you know what I what I did so fast forward now uh, several years since I started and you know it's it's just been a long journey and um, you know, huge, tremendous growth, and the markets obviously having uh, you know a crazy blow off top during the pandemic, and and there was so much opportunity, and and that's what we we prepare for, you know, when when trading environments get um, very very volatile, that's uh, when we capitalize, and 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 ultimately, I've been able to uh, really enjoy you know a great career of trading um, and you know sometimes it, it does get slow but uh, but all in all I'm happy to be able to uh, to live a, a, a life of uh, freedom and, and and not having to be a slave to the, the desk like I was back when I was an accountant it, it's really um, incredible to, to be able to um, you know spend a lot of time with the family. I have three kids, and uh, you know, trading is is fantastic, but it's not everything. And and it's a career that allows me to to, to do what I want, and you know, travel. Um, obviously, spend a lot of time with with family, and um, um, when things are busy, of course, you know, I have I have my 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 own hours, and and uh, the markets are always going to be there. So. Uh, the, the, the freedom is, is really unmatched and that's what uh, trading is all about. Um, you know, do it anywhere all over the world and uh, um, that's really been an incredible uh, opportunity for me and for a lot of s students that I, that I work with and, and uh, teach. Trading is definitely can be fun but it's also it's a grind and uh, you know, I, I definitely enjoy it, and uh, there's there's definitely a lot of ups and downs. But um, but I think getting used to a a, a disciplined lifestyle um, and and just staying true to to one strategy uh, really allows you to to or allows me to enjoy um, trading because the emotional side of trading is very difficult sometimes and. Um, the only way to really get over that is to to um, 
you know, eliminate the emotions as much as you can. So it's, I, I always say it's best not to get too high, too low, you know, even after a, a loss or a, or a big win or a big loss, you, you have to really reset. And, um, and I've learned over the years to, to try and stay even keel. Yeah. There's definitely a lot of challenges when first getting started with trading. Um, uh, new traders often have that difficulty of, of finding uh, the right stocks to trade and, and uh, there are only a certain, a, you know, a small number of plays that are ideal as we call them, ideal setups and I think a lot of newbies just have trouble identifying what, what an ideal setup is and um, you know preparation is, is key and I think uh, newer traders aren't necessarily willing to put in the work yeah, so ultimately, you really have to have a good mentor, someone that has a good track record. And that's, you know, what I pride myself on and, uh, and what I've learned from Tim Sykes is to really be transparent, show, show your trades, um, teach uh, in a way that, that shows uh, traders and new, newer traders uh, what, it, what it is like to, to be in a trade real time. You know, we do webinars and videos uh, to kind of show how, how we do things. And, um, and it, it, it really takes, again, a lot of dedication and, and um, commitment to learning these lessons. So losses are always part of the game. And uh, one has to accept, of course, that, that you know, not all trades are, are uh, gonna be winners. And the best way to, to manage your risk, obviously, is to, to have, you know, I, I use mental stops. I don't use hard, uh, you know, hard stops um, that I, you know, put into the, the, the trading software that I use. But, uh, but I have defined risk. And, and when you uh, size a trade accordingly and you have a very defined risk, um, you have to respect that and and that's how I've been able to stay in the game for this long you know cutting losses quickly is really <laughs> day trading uh, number uh, 101 right so um, so cutting losses quickly using a having a defined risk and respecting that risk um, is really the key to to minimizing um, your losses we talk about mental stops um, and really what that is is just knowing at a certain level if a stock's trading let's say at, at you know two two seventy let's say two dollars and seventy cents and and I'm getting in to a stock at that level uh, I'll probably risk the two fifty uh, a whole a half number two two fifty being uh, what what we call that mental uh, risk and uh, or mental stop and um, and so respecting that that key level in, in a chart pattern um, is is uh, how we kind of approach our trading uh, strategies. So before before you get into a trade, obviously one has to really analyze the uh, the, the risk reward, right? And 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 using the technical the technical levels of a chart, one can um, determine where those uh, stops are if, if you know if you are going to get stopped out of a stock and so um, as I said earlier if you if you're buying uh, a stock let's say in you know it's trading in, in the 250s and I'm entering somewhere in the in, in the 260s uh, as it's moving up and breaking out I'm going to use that 250 level two dollars and fifty cent level as a risk and um, and so that 250 in my head is my is that mental mental stop as I'm watching the price action and and you know trying to trying to really determine what uh, what the stock wants to do. So a lot of traders will will just stick with the trade even if uh, a key level is not holding. And I've been there before. Um, you know we all break rules. I think uh, any trader that you talk to has broken rules, and we learn the hard way. But uh, but newer traders who are not accustomed to, um, you know, getting out of a stock uh, when when it's really necessary, they'll add potentially add even more 
to a losing trade, and and uh, and that is uh, unfortunately uh, the reason a lot of traders uh, will end up blowing up because they're, they're just trying to average up their, uh, excuse me, average down their their positions. Trading is definitely uh, a, a very psychological game. I mean, I, I I compare it a lot of times to sports because you know there's definitely a lot of um, execution that that's needed but also the psychology and you know you look at the best athletes who who kind of have i think a, a a a very strong psychological edge and and that's ultimately what i think separates the best traders from from the rest of the pack i've actually been focused on crypto uh, very uh, closely this last year or so and uh, because i'm a little bit more short biased, meaning I, I like to bet against um, overpriced uh, stocks and, and even uh, crypto currencies, uh, particularly Bitcoin. I, uh, I was actually short using um, the options uh, strategy that, that I do teach uh, to my students at Evolve Trader. And, uh, and so I bought put options, which allows you to bet against Bitcoin. And uh, again, that was BITO. It's a, it's a futures ETF that, that trades based on the price of Bitcoin. And so I was short, or I was long BITO puts uh, and short Bitcoin effectively um, when it was trading around 30,000. And it dropped over the weekend to roughly 22,000. And I made about $230,000 over the weekend. So that was my biggest trade. It was. Uh, you know, it was, it was definitely a, uh, perhaps a little lucky, but, but I knew that Bitcoin was on its way down and, you know, the trend was uh, breaking. And um, uh, so that was one of my best trade. That was my best tra trade ever. Um, and uh, I had a nice trade, a couple of trades on NVIDIA, also when the bear market was really starting back in January of last year, and I made roughly 50,000 on, on NVIDIA as it broke down. Um, and uh, uh, the, short, the short side, um, you know, the market was, was really my best friend when, when, the, when things really started to unravel last year. So, so those were a couple of the, the bigger trades. Right, so a lot of stocks have actually dropped tremendously, and especially you know even the tech stocks like Amazon and and uh, Google, Microsoft, uh, Apple is is not that far off of its highs, but um, but I do think that the downside is not certainly not as much not as uh, uh, steep as it was you know back. In, in early uh, 2022. So um, there are still a lot of uh, overpriced uh, sectors, I would say. I still think crypto is very overvalued and, uh, and a lot still um, needs to happen, in, in my opinion, to, to you know, Bitcoin and, and, um, and some other cryptos that are still trading at, at massive valuations you know you have dogecoin which is still trading at a i believe like six seven billion dollar market cap and i just don't i don't see the sustainability of a lot of these um cryptos that are are essentially useless so 2023 is definitely going to be an interesting year uh you know last year was a tough year for a lot of traders and, um, you know, the interest rates are, are still rising. The Fed is kind of dictating uh, w what's happening in the market. So, uh, you know, I, I still think that, that the, the, the worst is not behind us. And I do think that, um, you know, the markets will retest their lows from, from uh, late last year. And... Um, you know how much downside maybe 10 to 20 percent that's ballpark what what I, what I think but um, you know I, I don't I think that the bear market that we've been in is is still uh, holding and and uh, it's it's just gonna be take some time right to to uh, factor in 
the recession or, or mild recession that, that we might uh, be headed or that we are heading into. So, uh, so tread caution. It's not a, it's not a uh, bull market by any means uh, anytime soon. Um, so yeah, I think I think there will there will be a time when when the momentum, you know, comes back. And and sh sure, I am, you know, more of a short bias trader, but I definitely uh, will go will bat both ways, so to speak. And uh, and you know, in fact, I, I did go long quite a bit during the pandemic. And and I think there there will be an opportunity on the long side once the market does bottom out um so you know i'm i'm looking for for indicators that that would um lead me to believe that you know that the, the markets have indeed bottomed and and there is upside f uh with momentum coming back into into some different sectors but until then uh i think there's there's still opportunity um you know, with playing playing bounces on on some some of these bankruptcy plays that are um, are going uh, are, are shooting up, uh, I think a lot of the a lot of the uh, news is already priced in. So so right now we're seeing a lot of uh, bankruptcy type movers uh, bouncing, which is not a sustainable sector, but. Uh, but there are pockets of opportunity, and and we'll see that um, for the meanwhile. And and you know until until we get a clear answer or a clear uh, um, a clear picture from the Fed, what they what where they plan to stop uh, raising rates or when, and, uh, and and potentially you know cutting rates, which I don't think will happen for for well over a year. So. Um, so we take it day, you know, day by day, week by week, and, and as day traders, we'll, we'll, we'll have opportunity, but I think uh, it'll be a little time before we get that bull market back again. So if you're looking to get started, um, you can check out my Twitter. I'm the Honest Crook, and um, you know, I, I have a, a, a trading service uh, called Evolve Trader, and uh, check out EvolveTrader.com. Uh, to get started, and, and um, I provide a lot of really detailed analysis of, of the top stocks to potentially trade uh, via options. And, um, you know, I put out a watch list every week, uh, do webinars, answer uh, questions, and really interact with members. So, uh, again, EvolveTrader.com. Um, check it out. I think uh, you'll enjoy it.